In this tutorial we're going to be continuing our study of PBR materials. So um, in this one though we're going to do something a little bit more advanced with our metalness map and roughness map. So um, what we're going to do is create a material that is painted metal um, but has some paint chips in it as well so you can see the metal underneath. Now a common mistake that people will do is um, create painted metal as white on their metalness map. Well that is incorrect. Since the paint sits over the top of the metal, the metal is no longer the material that the light is reacting to, it's actually the, the paint. And since the paint isn't metallic paint, um, we can actually do this as black on our metalness map. So you, you can see I've got a bunch of reference images and this is the kind of effect I'm trying to create, not rust but more kind of paint chips and paint wear. So the metal hasn't rusted underneath, the paint's been chipped away by, for whatever whatever reason. So I will provide these images um, on Moodle for you to use. Okay so let's make a new image and we'll make this 1024 by 1024 and our initial base colour we're going to go for a red. So our base kind of paint is going to be going to be red. Um, so the if we make another new layer on top of this and we'll make a new folder and in this we'll call this metalness because I think that's the first thing we'll do we're just trying to establish some areas where this paint wear is happening so we'll also need to open our UVs so I already have the UVs from our previous tutorials so if you don't have them though just jump into Maya and output and I'll put those again so we'll copy that into put this up here and and if we do control I to invert it and then set this to multiply so that will just sit over the top. So what we could do is actually just paint this uh, map straight in something like ZBrush, just a black and white map but for now we're just going to do this in uh, Photoshop but preferably you, you would do this in a 3D app just to sort out any seams. What you can do is paint this in Photoshop first and then import that into ZBrush and what we'll do is we'll cover that in this tutorial so that um, you're aware of how to do that. Uh, let's just really sort this out. So we'll add an albedo slot in here as well and drop that red colouring into there. I'm going to put that above my metalness for now. So in your metalness folder we'll want a black layer. And we'll stick that straight in straight in there. And then what we should probably do with this actually, bear in mind we will be working on a black background, is actually just set this to light in and do control I. So we actually want these to be white rather than black because we're going to be working on our metalness map first. So we'll add another new layer in and make sure we're on white colour. So remember to always be kind of using your reference reference images. So whatever kind of style it is you're going for with your chipped paint, I always make sure I have it on my, on my second monitor so that I can refer to that whenever I need it. So we've got a couple of uh, brushes we can use for this that you could make using the default Photoshop. So the first one is this one and I'll just run through all the settings. So I'm just going to try and get rid of that annoying uh, redraw issue. So to get to your brush palette just make sure you hit this tab here and our original brush tip shape was this one here and you can see the size settings here. I also have dual brush ticked on with this one selected here and you can see the size and the scatter that I've put onto this. 
So I'm going to use this just to create the initial kind of rough paintware. So tend to kind of work like this, which is where we're putting more kind of detail into this. What I might do is just turn down my shape dynamics a bit because we're going to want this to kind of go to a fine point where it where it wears out here. So you can see, compared to the brush we were using last time, this one's just a bit softer, it's a bit more kind of lumpy I suppose, to so fit in with the kind of little chunks of paint that come off with that, with that paint peel. Now the important thing here as well is to not worry about putting too much on, so, because we can delete that out, so definitely put two splodge kind of too much kind of paint wear on at the moment and we'll just delete delete out any bits that we don't need okay so we've got our rough kind of initial paint wear layer in there now so I'm now going to add a mask in just like we did before Make sure I've got black as my main colour and just stick with the brush tool because what we can do as long as you click on the mask, so you see it's got this white board around it now, we can now come in here and it's good to work with a different size brush for this or even a, a like completely different brush just to get that variety in this. And you see the way the brush is actually changing and that's because um, we have angle just turned on which can be really useful for again helping to get that variety probably worth turning on your UVs every now and then just to make sure that you're not deleting out any bits that you might feel are important again though it doesn't matter too much because you can always just go over this so we can just switch back to white and like, fill in any of those little gaps that you might want to make sure we're definitely, definitely done So remember sometimes, because we are working on the mask here, sometimes you can forget that. And um, So say if I'm painting in white over here, it's not going to do anything. You need to make sure you're clicked back on your layer over here if you want to do that. Obviously the reason we use a mask is because it's uh, non-destructive. So we know we can, if we just turn off the mask, you can see we can, uh, to hold, turn off the mask, hold shift and just click on the layer. You can see we can just get that straight back, so that's why that's useful. Um, so I'm going to go back to white again, and um, I'm just going to do a new layer for this actually. And this is just when we look at any kind of paintware stuff, you can see you've also got paint chips. You can see you've still got uh, little bits that are off this as well, and so we want to make sure we add some of these in to particularly around the kind of main areas where it's wearing away. So obviously you'll notice I'm only doing one 
down a course with us, and that's just to show you the pipeline. Um, and uh, I'll do a classic Blue Peter thing and just revert to uh, one. Here's one we made earlier, just so that you don't have to sit through watching me paint the whole whole thing. Okay, yeah, so that's not too bad. And because I'm using a Wacom here, obviously the harder I press, the larger that is. So that's why it's nice and easy for me to uh, get those that get that variation going on there. Okay, so there's our initial metalness map. What we might want to do is I do have another brush here, and then just load that one up. So you can see this one, this one's a bit more um, blurred out, and that's useful so we can um, we just paint with it, make sure I'm on white. And you can see that's just where some paint has worn away, but you know, not all of it, it's more like fade. So you could just make that transition between the paint chips and the um, And the metal just look a bit nicer. So just with the settings for that brush then, um, I've got this is the shape, check the size there. Um, shape dynamics, I've got a bit of size jitter. Um, I'm not particularly controlling that, but obviously you can do if you want. Um, I've got scattering on both axes, 29%. And I've got transfer turned on as well, and that's controlled by my pen pressure. Okay, so let's save this out as our metalness map. So file, save as, and we'll go to our usual folder, source images here, and set this to PSD, and we'll call this TA bar um, paint chips um, hit save and I can't remember if we saved the albedo or not um, I don't think we did so we'll, um, we'll have to do our obviously we haven't done our albedo properly yet anyway okay so what I'm going to do is duplicate this group and then select all the layers inside and just do flatten image <laughs> Sorry, no, do control E. And you can see now we've got our metalness map as a nice image. So what I do now is select it, control A, control C to copy. And in our albedo map, what we're going to do is make a new layer, paste, a, um, add a mask to it with this button, hold Alt and left click inside, and then control V to paste. And now what we can do is, if we click on the layer again, we can load up our don't nod chart. And we can pick the kind of um, uh, material we want to actually kind of have in there. So what kind of metal is it? So for this example, I might just stick aluminium in there. So if I now do um, alt and backspace, you can see I can fill that in with our aluminium colour. So let's do file, save as. And we'll call those paint chips A for albedo. So let's jump back into Marmoset and we'll load in our albedo. And we'll load in our metalness map as well. Okay, so we can see those paint chips start to have an effect on this. So we can see I've kind of painted this a bit wrong here. So, um, one thing we'll also want to do is load in our default normal map. So you should already have that saved. If not, I'll, for this tutorial, I'll include this. So there we go. So just add in our loops normal map. Turn down the gloss slightly, and you can already see what's going on here. Like, even though this isn't the best example, um, 
where it's white on our metalness map, we're getting that nice metallic shine. Where it's black, it's using that reflective value, which is always the same, um, which is just defined by the glossy, like that. Okay, so what we want to do is go in here and just... Uh, Ah, and that's obviously why. You see where I've painted this line. I haven't exactly painted this on the on the right UV. So let's just turn off our albedo layer and go back into our... Might as well get rid of that. Go back into our metalness map and just fix this up. So it's only really this layer that's the problem. So you've got a couple of choices here. You could just paint over this and redo it. Or you could like copy it and sort it out that way. I think I'm just going to repaint it, it's really not that hard. So we'll just make sure our mask isn't affecting this. And then we'll come back over here, paint over this, and then go back to white, and just add some more detail in this. And then we'll go back to black and just paint out some of this, exactly as we've done on the others, it's just, this time it's actually on the right on the right uh, part of the UV and also I was looking at it thinking maybe these bits are a little bit chunky in places I'm kind of quite happy with that bit but just not the other side So obviously, as I said before, this can be easier to do in just a 3D, 3D paint program. Obviously, Photoshop has that immediacy about it, which is always nice. But and I was quite like the actual paintware, to be honest. I'm not too bothered about changing that much. If anything, I'd, I would rather add like a bit more, a bit more in there. Obviously we need to add a bit more where the uh, okay, but we added that new detail in. So let's save this back out. Paint chips for that. Same thing again, duplicate the group, control E to flatten it, control A, control C to copy. Then in our albedo, hold Alt, click on the mask, and Control V to paste. And then File, Save As, and we'll save over our albedo. Okay, we can see now those paint chips that are working along there. I'd say some of these chip bits are probably looking a bit big. So one thing we might want to do is just bring those down a little bit. Where are they? There they are. So I'm just going to use black and just paint out the size of some of these chips.
so that might be a little bit better. So obviously the annoying thing here is I do keep having to resave and um, redoing this thing to add it to the mask. But once you get used to just doing this save by plan again, it could become pretty quick. So there we go, we can save that as our, our B day. And there we go, his paint chips are a little bit smaller. Now I think that's something too much effect, so I'll turn that down. So it'd probably be roughly something like this for the for the final one. So what I want you to do now is carry on painting that and get that looking exactly how you want it. And then what we're going to move on to doing is our normal map and our roughness map. <laughs> 